Hi everyone, welcome to Shukin Science. In this video, we're going to look at the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis. So if you recall from the previous video on photosynthesis, you'll remember that the process is divided into two separate steps. The first of which being the light dependent reactions. You'll also recall that all of this has taken place inside specialized organelles within plant cells called chloroplasts. So what we're going to do is zoom into a single thylakoid within a chloroplast and visualize some of the proteins that are embedded in the thylakoid membrane. Most of the reactions that take place during this step occur either in the thylakoid or along the thylakoid membrane. And ultimately, the goal of the light dependent reactions isn't to make glucose, it's to make two molecules which will eventually enter the stroma, and then they will go on to fuel the next set of reactions. So eventually, we're going to be making a molecule called ATP and another molecule called NADPH. So the whole thing begins with sunlight. The sun comes along and strikes chlorophyll molecules found in these proteins here, photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Now, these are just two versions of essentially the same membrane-bound protein, but they're both packed full of chlorophyll. And so chlorophyll, since it's so good at absorbing the sun's energy, it transfers that radiant energy to an electron found in the reaction center of photosystem 2 our first protein. This process, since it involves energy from the sun, is called photoexcitation. So this is step number one in the light dependent reactions. And photoexcitation happens again once we reach photosystem two. Oops, sorry, photosystem one. I always get them mixed up. Actually, fun fact, the reason why the first one is called PS2 and not PS1 is because PS1 was discovered first. Um, so we get them mixed up all the time. That's okay. So photoexcitation strikes an electron in the reaction center of PS2. That electron now becomes energized, which means it can't just stay in that protein. What it does instead is it will then be passed along to other proteins, which can use its energy to facilitate additional chemical reactions. Now, each of these proteins have specific names and you, know, you can learn in way more detail about the reactions that take place here. For our purposes, all we really need to understand is that as that electron gets passed from protein to protein, it will eventually make its way into photosystem one. And when it reaches the PS1, it has become de-energized. It has moved down energy levels. So as it's facilitating reactions in these proteins, it's releasing some energy that is then used to fuel the pumping of hydrogen ions into the thylakoid from the stroma. So the point of this is to start establishing a hydrogen ion gradient. The more hydrogen that we have starting to build in the thylakoid, then it's gonna make one of our other processes easier. So this is step number two. We call it the electron transport chain or ETC for short, because we're literally just moving an electron down each of those proteins to help generate that hydrogen ion gradient. Now, there's another process that helps to generate a hydrogen ion gradient. It's called photolysis. Photolysis is exactly what it sounds like. It's using, again, radiant energy from the sun to split, this time, water molecules. So we end up with hydrogen ions, oxygen molecules, and eventually some extra electrons. Now, the ele extra electrons that are generated from this reaction then go on to replace the electron that left photosystem two. So it's not like as the plant does this, it's depleting PS2 of electrons, because this will replace this. 
the oxygen um, is kind of just a you know happy accident. It gets released into the air and we get to breathe it in. And the hydrogen obviously con continues to contribute to that hydrogen ion gradient. So this process of photolysis also requires sunlight to occur. Now, the reason why building this hydrogen ion gradient is so important is because it is going to be used to facilitate the next step, which is called chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis, or step number four, is just the movement of those hydrogen ions from high to low concentration. And we know osmosis is a form of passive transport. So going from high to low means that no additional energy is required to move the hydrogen ions through this protein. As the hydrogen ions move through this protein called ATP synthase, by the way, you can take a whole course <laughs> to learn how ATP synthase works. Um, but the short story is when the hydrogen ions move through that protein in the thylakoid membrane, another reaction is facilitated where a molecule in the stroma called ADP is converted into ATP. And ATP, if you recall from earlier in the video, is one of the main purposes of the light dependent reactions. ATP will go on to fuel the second step, which are the light independent reactions. And this step here, since we are gaining an electron to convert ADP into ATP, that is called reduction. So really, the first five steps are all to facilitate eventually this reduction reaction. The photo excitation that generates an energized electron in PS2, the first step of the electron transport chain, the building of that hydrogen ion gradient, all of it is used for chemiosmosis so that we can eventually end up making a molecule of ATP. A lot of work for one little molecule, although it's an important one. The last molecule we need in order to fuel the second set of reactions is one called NADPH, and that's where photosystem one is going to come in. So if you recall, this electron that had jumped down the first electron transport chain, it has lost energy. So it's just kind of hanging out there. Eventually, it will also become energized as chlorophyll inside of photosystem one absorbs more radiant energy from the sun. That electron now is re-energized and then it is passed down a second set of proteins in the thylakoid membrane. Just draw this over here, we have a little bit more space. Um, this is gonna be our sixth step, which is a second electron transport chain. And as that electron is passed down those proteins, it will then eventually help to facilitate another reduction reaction, this time converting NADP plus in the stroma to NADPH. So this is our final step, and it is again called reduction. So we have two electron transport chains, we have two rounds of reduction, both of which produce very different products, right? Our first electron transport chain derived from photosystem two, its job is to make ATP. Our second electron transport chain derived from photosystem one, its job is to make NADPH. And once we have both of those molecules, then we can go on to the second set of reactions called the light independent reactions, which you can check out in our next video. Thanks everyone.